and my name is Mark Salazar, and we have special guest Kyle Holder uh, with the Yankees uh, organization meeting up with us today and just to talk life, um, the word, and just uh, any questions that anyone may have, feel free to, to send those in. We'll, we'll, we'll get the questions towards the end, but definitely want to spend some time in the word and just hearing Kyle's stories, but why don't we open in prayer? Uh, Father, thanks for our time together. Thanks that we can uh, just sit here just using this technology just to, to learn about you, to be encouraged just by another guy who loves you, Lord, and he just happens to play baseball. So um, we just pray, God, you be honored and glorified today as we talk about So, Kyle, thanks for being our guest. And I guess my first question would be just why don't you kind of catch us up a little bit before we get in the book of James? Like, why don't you just share a little bit of your, your faith journey? It's like where God has brought you, how you came into the Lord. Yeah, I was a, uh, I was raised Catholic. My family, my mom was a Catholic. Her, her dad's a Catholic. And so I was raised in the Catholic family, got baptized in the Catholic church, received reconciliation, confirmation, all that stuff that Catholics go through. Um, so that, that took me all the way up through about 2000, I would say uh, growing up, me and my brothers were, were pretty, I guess not forced is a, is a bad word, but my, my parents wanted us to go to the Catholic church. Mm-hmm. So we did, we did that. And once I got into high school, later years in high school, we weren't forced as much and we kind of stopped, we fizzled off and stopped going. And then I got into college and my faith wasn't very strong, I would say. I kind of was focused more on the fleshly life, you could call it, um, sports, having fun with friends, things that a lot of people go through, I guess, growing up. Went to community college, and then I went to University of San Diego. Drafted 2015 by the Yankees. Um, played the first half season in Staten Island. And then I showed up to spring training in 2016. And I met a couple buddies on my first my first team in Staten Island that were Christians that we got along very well. And so when I showed up to spring training in Florida in 2016, a couple of those buddies said, "Hey, come come along do uh, a chapel service," which is kind of like the only time really that with the busy schedule of baseball that you can get together with the with a what they call a chapel leader who who kind of delivers a service every Saturday or Sunday depending on what day. Yeah. So yeah, that just day. someone listening. So yeah, Kyle was talking about once he was in playing the ball in the Myers for the Yankees, they had baseball chapel, which is just like a service for the the athletes there to pretty much have church on the road because they're so busy. Exactly. They don't have opportunity to go. So they have baseball chapel on a regular. So just want to clarify that that's a really cool thing that MLB has. Yeah, and it it's not necessarily how how long the the service is because with our schedule it's kind of especially in spring training when there's like 300 plus people and the people that want to go to chapel service it's bright and early in the morning around 6 37 a.m. before the the, the day starts because yeah. once the day gets going it gets hectic with all the practices and then the games and things like that so it's um it's cool that they do set aside a time for people who who want to get in the word for 15 minutes or so get, get that chance. So that it's, it's really cool. And which leads me to, you know, where I found the Lord and I guess was reborn and accepted, accepted the Lord of my life was at 2016. I went to this service that a couple of my good buddies were like, Hey, and at this point I, I, like I said, I was, I was raised Catholic, but I never really had that relationship. And I think that's what's, truly important is is continuing and having that relationship and not just being religious yeah. you know it's not it's not a religion it's a relationship but bet you a lot of people have heard that things like that but so i so when i showed up to this chapel service i they had a guest speaker who kind of laid his testimony out on the line and said that he had got involved he was a major league pitcher got involved with alcohol and that took over his life and then he accepted the lord into his life and he was sharing that and it was like it all hit me like that somebody that played in the major leagues that had been through a lot of adversity was able to kind of just like lay his life on the on the line and become a 
a born again Christian. And so at the end of this, at the end of this kind of service of his sh- sharing his testimony and the word getting opened, Mark, you've heard this before, but they, yeah. the chapel, the chapel leader kind of said, Hey, if anyone wants to, you know, accept the Lord in their life. And I was kind of up in the air about it. Cause I had already, I guess I thought I had already accepted the Lord being a Catholic raised Catholic and receiving all these holy sacraments and things like that. So I, I was kind of up in the air about it. And he stopped and paused and said, whoever wants to raise their hand and we'll pray over you. And as I was sitting there confused on what I should do, I closed my eyes. And as I started to think about raising my hand, like I felt this, the Holy Spirit or something just like raise my hand in the air for me. And at that point, I kind of knew that this is what God wanted me to do. Yeah, you couldn't help but not do it, right? You were like, I, it, <laughs> Mark, I, I've explained this to you a lot, and yeah. it's hard to describe the feeling I felt when, when this happened. Yeah. It was more of like, a, I closed my eyes and kind of was just like, what do I do? Like, do I do this? Do I do this? And like, when I was saying that to myself, like, my hand raised, like, I didn't even try to raise it. And it was just like, I felt this pressure this this sense of heaviness come off my chest and my hand just raised and i was just instantly relaxed and that and that was that and afterwards i kind of had a talk with john zeller who i still communicate with a lot he's uh one of the chapel leaders in tampa florida and he was just like we're so like i'm so glad you did this all this stuff and that started a whole relationship with him and i but like that's kind of my first true um acceptance of the lord and that happened in 2016 so that's kind of the background i could go on about you know things yeah. before that and after that and i kind of just wanted to keep it short for you and you would say too like it just an art and because we've talked about this already we've gone over this like that was really the beginning of you truly walking with christ and going from religion to relationship and and although that you know had what well, did everything to us do do you go to the Catholic Church early on? Like you heard the seeds of the gospel, they were there, you heard about it, but you never truly sat in that seat of salvation until this moment where Christ came and said, No, Kyle, you're mine, and here it is, and then from that moment to finish the relationship with him, right? Yes, a hundred percent. And it's for me it was it was hard to to really feel that that feeling of salvation because of the upbringing of the cat and I'm not knocking the Catholic church by all means at all, but like with, with being forced almost to go to church, it was hard to like, kind of like have that aspect of the relationship versus like, Oh, I'm going to church because it's Sunday. Like, what am I getting out of it? Like it was hard for me to, to, to get something out of it that really mattered until things started kind of when I was growing up and I found where my, where my life was kind of going to with being drafted and being a professional baseball player, what comes with that pressure, all this stuff. And I needed something better. So so, so being drafted first round money, all that stuff. So all that stuff doesn't really make your life better. Does it? No, no. (laughs) you You could, you could, obviously it helps out. You can help your family out you can pay off some student loans things like that 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 helps out but like the true joy and happiness of it honestly was harder yeah when after being drafted in the first round and going out to staten island where i was away from my family for the first time really things like that there's a lot there's a lot more to it than just oh wow he signed in the first round he's a pro baseball player he's famous things like that like it has nothing to do with that 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 puts more of a reason why it was so important and so like awesome to me that i that i accepted christ in my life in 2016 it was almost like a restart yeah yeah hey hey, let's dig in real quick you you mentioned a word that i wrote down during your talk you said adversity and that just made me think to where we're going in james because exactly we talk about the bible uses the word test and trial interchangeably we're about to look at that so um I have now, we're going through James uh, chapter 1, verses 2 through, um, was it 2 through 6 or 2 through 8? 
It's it's two through eight, but I, I've I like the first the first couple. Oh, we lines, froze. Two, th- two through four. Where are we at? Hold on, we, we gotta freeze. Uh oh. Oh, I can hear you now. So, are are we on six? Are we go? Are we going two through six or two through eight? The whole the whole two through eight's cool. I like the whole thing, but I like to focus more on the first couple verses of that. Okay, why don't we read? I'll read two through eight, then you can. Yeah, read. yeah, yeah, for sure, for okay. sure. All right, so James chapter one verse two through eight says, "Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect." that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith without no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For the person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. So Kyle's going to take it off for us here and just kind of talk about that first portion of of the testing and trials and how, what it produces. Yeah, yeah. For me, for me, it was it kind of goes hand in hand with how you brought adversity up. I found yeah. when when I was going through James, I think this was in 2017. I was playing in high A in the Florida State League and struggling big time. And obviously, I was, you know, a born again Christian since 2016 and 17. When this happened, it was almost like I I like got away from what really mattered in my life and started focusing so much more on baseball that it was getting to me big time. And I was struggling big time in 2017. Wasn't the game turned into like a job instead of what baseball should be played as. And I was, and I became, I found myself coming more of a baseball player as, and then a Christian second versus vice versa, how we're Christians first and just so happen to play baseball, you know? And when I came across that, that first portion, it, it hit home to me big time that when you, when you go through something and at that time I thought it was super, you know, super crazy, super bad what I was going through when really it was just me playing baseball and not playing baseball to the, to the success that I thought I could in a sense that I was, my attitude was changing my me getting into the word me trying to you know spread the word all those good things were kind of going out the door because i was trying to succeed solely in baseball and not focus on what really mattered in my life which was my relationship with with god and and so i came across that and it hit home because i was i found a way to like flip the switch and realize that this adversity that i'm going through is going to make my relationship with God better and my walk with Christ better and everything along those lines. So when I, when I found out that and I read more, it's like my season changed around in a sense where I, I could show up to the field happy. I could show up to the field knowing that this isn't who I am. It's baseball is not who I am. It's this the thing that I do, you know? And so when I found that it was like, once again, it's almost like, it was a second time accepting Christ in my life, not accepting him, but realizing like, geez, like I'm glad you brought this for, I guess you could say brought this first into my life, even though it, it already was, but like showed me it and helped me understand it better to the point where I could, I could apply it and realize that how powerful that could be, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, as I was looking at this too, when when we look at this, is when you when you meet various uh, when you meet trials of various kinds, it doesn't say if you meet trials, it says when. When. And yeah. so it's we got to realize that that's going to happen. And another word for for trial is test. Uh, so testing, and then we look at this. It says, "Was a test? Your faith produces steadfastness, right? For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness." Um, another word for faith. I was looking at you know. Uh, uh, of faith. The author, or the, the, a similar word for faith and an interchangeable word in the Bible is belief. So faith and belief are the same. So what's the opposite yep. of faith? Unbelief. So you have belief and unbelief. So really, these tests, these trials really 
allow us to show what kind of faith that we truly have. Um, yeah. And, and that's what, that what was, that's what was so shocking to me was that my faith I thought was strong and what I was doing the right thing wasn't where I wanted it to be because of how bad and how incomplete I felt in my heart during that time of, you know, trying to focus on baseball and why isn't this working out, blah, 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 all the stuff that really doesn't matter. Yeah. And that's why I picked this part of James because it almost changed my life again. Yeah. You know, I, 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 it helped me really understand that. Yeah, not the just, if, but when you reach those trials, yeah, you it's so much easier when you have a, a perfect God on your side, you know. Well, yeah, and we know that the the battles already been won. So the the reality of the battle and stuff that we go through, it's already been won across. And so to to rest in Him and to lean on Him during those. Also, I uh, was looking at a, a cross reference in First Peter, First Peter six to seven says, "In this you rejoice." Though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold and, and that perishes, though it is tested by fire and may be found um, to result in praise and glory and uh, in honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So, I mean, like, once again, it's pretty much saying the same thing here in, in First Peter. Um, just that there, there's a test and there's a trial. It's really to reveal what kind of faith that we have. Yep. And, uh, yeah, man. Thanks for sharing. Now, on a practical level, can you maybe share? Well, you just did. Never mind. That was a good one. All right. So, um, any 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 final thoughts from you before we close in prayer? Uh, that any kind of takeaways from you or encouragement to to stand firm? I know a lot of people are bored right now, and people are. Could be trial time. I mean, there could be someone listening who maybe lost a job. Uh, we have yep. students who are figuring things out. I know we got uh, some ball players, some, you know, eighth grade. Some. I know we have a, a junior on, on the line here too. So, I think it's a. I think it's a great time to. To get in the word more than any. Like every time's a great time, but when, especially since a lot of people aren't working and a lot of people are stuck at home, not knowing what to do. Yeah. I think it's a perfect time to get in the word, I set, a goal, set a goal for yourself, set a book in the Bible and how long you want to get through it or how many chapters a day, if it's one, you know, like anything's better than nothing. And I think at this time, it's a, it's a perfect time to get in the word. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. That's good. Hey, so why don't we pray real quick and then we'll open up to any questions. I've got a few things to love to. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Father, thanks for our time together with Kyle. I pray, Lord, be encouraging for us, Lord, to, to look at these trials as a way uh, to reveal the testing of our faith, Lord, and see what kind of faith we, we really have. And Lord, do we have a, a saving, life-changing faith in you where we have a relationship with you? Or do we, are we holding on to something that doesn't even exist? Are we holding on to a religion? Are we holding on to this world? Someone to be challenged with that. And they, you know what? I want the kind of faith that, that Kyle has, that Mark has, a, a, a type of faith that leads to a real relationship with Jesus Christ that is life-changing, that lasts forever. Um, I pray, Lord, that there would be someone who would just reach out and say, hey, I, I want that faith. I need to learn more about it, or I'm ready to receive Christ. Um, and, Lord, for the believer, may this encourage us, Lord, just to keep pressing on and May we take advantage of this time to to grow deeper in you, to, to get in the word and, and to prioritize you in our life. Thank you for your time, praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, I'm gonna jump into it, man. Um, you mentioned uh, during a trial of uh, like um, you had a priority on baseball and that kind of shifted, right? And I know coming from USC, I know Rich Hill, you played from too and uh, he's big on the mental game, right? Just the uh, sports psychology and stuff. How much would you say your walk with Christ impacts that mental game that allows you to be free? Like Exactly. And I think that's what what kind of happened in that 2017 episode I was telling you about, how I once again added so much extra pressure that didn't matter to the season and I found myself walking away from from who I was trying to find things to one make me happy because I was struggling to things that, that would help me out to help me not struggle anymore when really it was just 
a little trial that I had to deal with. And I found out that my faith was being tested, but, yeah. but the, I guess you can connect the mental side of baseball too. And I hate to say that as soon as I, you know, like kind of realized that I wasn't, my walk wasn't as strong anymore during this time that when I did, you know, pray for, for less anxiety, less stress to just go out and play the game fun that my season turned around. It's, yeah. it's crazy how that ended up happening. You know, like I, I figured out who I was and how bad I was acting inside and what I was doing. Yeah. And I put my focus more on my faith versus baseball and my baseball game changed, you know? Yeah. So I think that's those, those two things go hand in hand and that free feeling of, of playing the game without worrying about who you are on the outs. Like those, those two things, like I'm a base, I'm a Christian that plays baseball. You know, and that and I that's crazy that we were talking about that, because that's kind of the motto I, you know, like put to, to the test after I, you know, changed my attitude around and started like trying to strengthen my relationship. I was going out to the to the field with a smile on my face, not really caring about the results, but rather trying to, I guess, make a in person, like show that. I'm a Christian versus like some guy that's going to slam his bat every time he gets out. You know, like I, I wanted to change the way I was acting because I felt convicted. I felt like I wasn't acting the way yeah. I should be as a, as a Christian, you know? For sure. You made a statement like you were thinking about before you're, you knew of a transition from athlete Christian to now Christian athlete. Mm-hmm. And it made me think too back in the, in the high school days of being recruited, like, I think when you're thinking about do I go play college right away? If someone has that often, I would go play college or do I go pro or what kind of college do I go to? And you have to think, am I an athlete student or student athlete? Right? And you start thinking about like, do I would even if you have the ability, do I go to a state school? Do I go to San Diego State? Not knocking on it. Yeah. Or do I go to the USB more academia? And you gotta think, am I a what kind of person am I? But I love that challenge. Like, am I a Christian athlete or an athlete Christian? And so I would say for anyone out there too who is playing sports. What kind of person are you? Are you an athlete? Yeah. And it, it, that desire to do that. Yeah. And for me, I know God doesn't want somebody that's going out to the field and not letting it be known that he's a follower, you know? And that's for me, cool. that's what convicted me big time was like my attitude, the way I felt inside was like it wasn't matching up with yeah. the person I wanted to be. And so that's what really struck me to like, get in the word more and and continue growing my relationship and focusing less on what do people think of me as a baseball player? What, what do people think of how I'm playing all the, all the extra noise that doesn't really matter changed when I was like, I'm going out in front of a lot of fans, a lot of peers, a lot of teammates. Like I want people to know the person I am deep down inside, not the baseball player that I am, you know? And for me, that's kind of what, altered my way of thinking which ultimately helped my baseball game if that makes sense yeah here's a million dollar question that's great what are some ways what are some ways that you try to reach those goals or how do you try to do that how do you let how do you let people ban or how do you let others know that you are a believer yeah yeah like you said mindset's a big thing if you if you have the mindset of going out to the field knowing that no matter what happens on that field, if I'm given a hundred percent effort, yeah, that my my true colors or is it, is in my faith. I think that I think that helps out a lot because he doesn't care what what your batting average is, how many home runs you hit. Yeah, it's it's a plus, you know. He yeah. wants to grow in you, and you grow in him. And yeah. and I think that's a huge a huge thing that I figured out. Yeah in the early 2017 season was, was exactly that. Yeah. All right. Some, some quick, some quick thoughts I had about the game. Uh, defense, defense stuff. Rawlings or Wilson? Um, I was a, I was a, I signed a contract when I signed with the Yankees in 2015 for Wilson. And I was with Wilson for three, four years. And then once my Wilson contract was up, I ended up signing a contract with Rawlings. So I've done both. I like I like both of them. I like both of them. I'm really starting to like my Rawlings gloves that I've that I've broken in and playing yeah. with. But I, I did really like I won a gold glove with with Wilson. So it's kind of a 
bit, a little bittersweet feeling. <laughs> well, what about uh, bats? What kind of bats do you use? I have a contract with Louisville Slugger, Louisville? so that's what Louisville, I've been swinging what, for. What, what, what for, do you like, maple or? I'm a, I'm swing mostly birch, but birch, all right. uh, maple and birch. A good, a good old fashioned ash bat's pretty good too. Ash is starting to kind softer. of fall, f- fall off, but I know. I like uh, mainly birch, though. All right. What well, what size bat do you use? I'm a thirty-three. <laughs> Wilson. I'm a thirty, uh, thirty-three and a half, thirty and a half, or thirty-one, depending on what what model I'm swinging. So you thirty-three inch and like thirty-one and a half, or thirty, thirty, thirty-three and a half, thirty and a half. 30 yeah, and a half. I think uh, you and Austin got me on the thirty-three and a half. I, I picked up a couple of thirty-three and a halfs, and I, I must say I like it. Yeah, a little extra. Yeah, that, that, a little that head, right? Yeah, yeah, a little, a little extra, so you don't have to. So you can back off the plate a little bit, feel feel a little bit more freed up. All right. Cool, oh, man. Um, what are maybe one or two drills that that are like your go tos for defense? Like I, I know that one one thing for you. When I watch, I, I, there's a video on my playlist of you, and there's no instruction, but it's just, um, it's just so cool. When I when I watch you field, um, you're always moving your feet. Exactly. Like you're, you're going there, you're throwing like you never stop. I just noticed that you, like out of all the guys that I've seen, like you probably move your feet the most, and like even when you're sitting there, you kind of just you're, you're waiting for that hop. It's rhythm. Just, it's all defense is all rhythm. Ooh. It's trying to listening. all rhythm, baby all rhythm you don't ever want to stop your feet because what do you have to do after you catch it? you gotta you gotta move your feet to throw it again you know yeah i uh i think it's important to to almost think about dancing when when the ball's coming to you because you can always move forward you can always move back you always want to get that good hop if you're stuck in place and you find like the ball's eating you up a lot if you move your feet you're giving yourself a way better chance to get the better hop yeah. So I think moving your feet and then just relaxing your glove hand. Not don't be stiff. Don't run to the ball with your glove stiff out. Like remember, it's rhythm. Moving your feet, keeping it light with the hands, and I think that's going to be that puts you in the best position to be the most athletic, which is what infielders are. At, let your athleticism come out. Ah. Uh... Uh, Mark, Gray, Sandler, or oh, whatever. Someone's messing me. Be, be someone's messing with me. All right. Um, what about um, what are what are like? Do you have any drills you do on a regular? Let's say you go out to the ballpark. Is it, what's your routine for defense? Like, like, what do you? Is there any drills you do on a regular? So what I, I, I start with wide base. So the fungo, whoever's hit, whoever's hitting fungo. Will get it doesn't really matter how far, but I try to have them hit the ball around me because obviously I'm not moving my feet yet. I'm just my I'm in a wide base and it's just glove work. So if the ball's right in front of you, then we're feeling it with two hands. If it's backhand, we're feeling it on this hand. If it's forehand, but this is all within like a little bit further than shoulder width apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just working, the, warming up the hands. Got and it. then after you do a couple on each side, then it's then you sit in the same stance, go socks. Um, that's, just, my that's my son. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> and then it's just the fungo hitter will hit it in the same spot, and then we're just working on right, left, right, left field, right, left field, right, left field, right, left for your for what your feet. Yeah. yeah. So just you, we're not doing anything crazy. The ball's just right at us. Just working on that generic right, left field. Wow. Okay. And then after that then we're backing up and then we're doing just normal ground balls infield on the grass like the infield's in and then i like to go back to middle like we're playing in not grass or not regular distance it's the halfway point so it, so we go back is that right left field is that for the purpose of getting you in rhythm for moving mm-hmm. the ball? yeah exactly so it's just like the normal if the ball's getting hit to you you're not going to field it with your feet planted you're going to have some sort of momentum going to first yeah. base so I mean, it's hard to show you with my with my. Well, I guess I I call a circle. Yeah. Ball, right? yeah, yeah. So like, right, left. I'm going yeah. and fielding. You yeah. know. Yeah. So that's that, and then then you back up, and then you kind of just do. I I I'd say on a regular day, it's like about eight eight balls on on the infield in grass, and then I go back to middle, and then I take eight more, and then I go back and I do like five to eight on the back. 
Yeah. And then cool. That's, any, that's really that. any questions from uh, anyone out there in the chat? I know we've got some people on the chat. You guys can type them in, or if you want to unmute yourself, you can unmute and ask away. We're going to wrap up here in about two minutes, so feel free to ask away on the gram or Facebook or um, – Hey, can I ask a question, Mark? Yeah. Oh, oh, rock. RJ, whatever. You're a clown. <laughs> no, man. I mean, no, a real question. How no, you doing, brother? Real question. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that whole thing about the, the bat was like, you remember how Mark Grace had that really thick handle? You had no idea how he held it. And then there's like these people like George Brett that had the really slim bat handle. You hold it with your, you know, people prefer one or the other. I don't know which one you preferred. But uh, that was my question. That was just kind of a stupid comment. But yeah. my, no, my, I don't know, so. My, my, all right. Yo, my, my real question. Oh, your real question. No, my, my real question is, uh, you know how, like, your job is, like, uh, you have to be, like, incredibly competitive, right? Like, very aggressive. And uh, you, when you're an unbeliever, it's easy to have that killer mentality, right? Because you're not really thinking about other people. You're just thinking about, you know, uh, just killing the competition. But when you become a believer, like, it gives you this heart for, you know, love your neighbor and, and you know. So how do you that aggressiveness in the, in the business that you have when you're a believer? What's that's your a new great, motivation? That's a great, that's a great question. And I think that question, Artie's back off. So I think that question too is how, how can you be a competitor for Christ? I think that's how, if I were to rephrase it, how can you compete without being soft, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, especially in the cutthroat world of professional baseball, everyone, a lot of people have this, the thought in their head that w once you get drafted, it's like you're famous, you're a professional, all this stuff. It, it gets worse. It's everyone's competing to try to make the 25 man roster in the major leagues, you know? So the, that competitiveness bumps up about a hundred percent when you get drafted and you become a professional because you're competing, not against just people, your teammates in college, but 300 other players within the same organization to make it to the major leagues and as in an organization that I'm in the New York Yankees, it's, they, they don't take failure for an answer. Like it's, they're one of the most pres prestigious organizations of all time. So they expect excellence all the time, which adds that extra pressure. But for me, it's like, I, I realized that having a relationship with, with Christ is makes me a better baseball player. So for me, it's, I'm going to go out and I'm going to put my heart on the line on the baseball diamond and know that my relationship with Christ isn't going to alter. It's going to, it's going to get stronger because I'm putting in just as much time on the baseball diamond as I am outside trying to be the better person I am. So I think they go hand in hand for me. A lot of my good buddies are, are believers. And we talk about that a lot, actually, not that specific question, but like we try to find a way to, get in the word and and fellowship and stuff like that because we know that it takes the pressure off of us on the baseball field which just lets our natural abilities come out if that makes sense i don't know if that answers your question yeah i mean if i were to like add in and chime in and kind of say what you said and add to it is like when we know our identities in christ yeah the the the, the feeling that i have to compete with my 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 buddy teammate next to me goes out of the picture you're 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 playing for an audience of one you're playing for team jesus and you're, you're kind of putting uh his will in charge of that right you're like all right yeah. i'm gonna do my best a, that's all i can do and if i get i have a perfect example of this my manager that year 2017 was jay bell i don't know if if you guys know the name jay bell you probably do mark but he's a world series oh, champion yeah. with the diamond oh, yeah. yeah like me and him and he's a believer too so me and him got along so well that whole year and he said the minute this you can kind of connect this to 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 your faith someone's faith but he said the minute you take pleasure in your teammates successes you'll find you are succeeding more if that makes sense and especially yeah. in the in the minor leagues it's like oh if that guy above me hits 210 i'm i'm taking his job next year you know or he I, he yeah, I'm yeah, up, exactly. yeah. and he said huh. kyle the minute that you start taking pleasure and like so that year i was struggling and 
everyone else on the team was raking. And I was like, how is how am I not doing this? Like, I'm better than these guys. And I was kind of talking to Jay about that during like some sort of fellowship. And he was just like, Kyle, the, the more that you almost wish that your teammates get out so that you can get the hit or whatever, like it's never going to happen. But the minute you take pleasure in your teammates successes is when you'll start finding yourself succeed more. And, and yeah. to this day is three years later. And it's like, I take that to heart because it's true. Like if you're out there rooting against your teammates or rooting against someone to get hurt or things like that, like it's just, it, it's, I don't know. It, it doesn't work out. You know, if that, if that, yeah. helps out, it'll, it'll, that's awesome. All right, I got time for one or two more. Anyone else before we wrap it up? Boom. Going once. Yo, I just I just want to chime in and say, dude, uh, Kyle, man, that's that's a pretty awesome testimony you have there. And um, you know, I play professional sports as well. I didn't. We don't have the exact same testimony, but you know. I was praying and, and reading James this morning, same exact verses, and I was going through it. And where I see myself now being outside of sports and, you know, my finding my identity, who am I? And 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 you're you're in your, you know, career and playing doing your passion and stuff like that. And you're in this word and you're, you know, an example of what it means to be a Christian athlete. And I think it's just really cool, man, that you know, you've got a grasp on that, like right now. And, and, um, I think, uh, I just, you know, I'm encouraged hearing, hearing your story and then, you know, thinking of mine as, as, uh, as well and, and how God is using my experience in the NFL right now, four years out of the NFL, you know, stuff like that. So yeah. for you to, you know, go to James and talk about that, you know, as I was in it this morning, it's just really, um, it's cool, man, because, yeah. you know, I, I take, like I said, take joy, you know, in, in the things that we're going through and understand that all these trials and these testament or uh, trials and, and tribulations that we face are really revealing to ourselves who we are, you know, in our faith walk. And then also as a person, the things that we need to work on. So that's I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate, I appreciate the love. That's, that's what it's about, you know, is understanding where your faith stands and understanding that we are going to face things that are going to test our faith. And if we right. rely on on God, it it's just it makes the world a whole lot better. So I, I appreciate you. Let me know that. Yeah, so true, man. I, I, my guy, uh, Garrett Cole. He's yeah, that's uh, that's my guy, man. We went to college together. Really? And then also Harky, the pitching coach. Yeah, yep. I Mike played Harky. with his son. Yeah, yeah. So if you see them anytime soon, let me, let them know you that I say what's up. I will for sure. I appreciate that. Yeah, cool. God, man. Yeah, God bless you, man. You too. I'm gonna head out, Mark. I'll see you All guys. Right. See you, Nate. Later. All right, guys. We're gonna sign off. Kyle, thanks once again for the reminder just to um, find our identity in Christ and and to the realization of our. Uh, those trials and tests that we go through really reveal what kind of faith we have. 100%, Mark. Thanks for having me on. I yep. appreciate it. Yeah, man.